So this question starts out by giving us two functions. We have an f of x equals x cubed minus 9x, and we have a g of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. Both of these things can technically be factored a little bit. I do notice that, and it really catches my eye because typically if we're going to answer a question and there's an equation provided that can be simplified is usually best to do so. So I'm going to just follow my hunch here and say this is a simplified question. And there might be some more things going on. But let's just simplify what we have, okay? So what I mean is, you know, the strategy, in fact, that I teach is if you can simplify it, you should. So how can I simplify x cubed minus 9x? Well, there's a GCF. The GCF is x. I can pull that out. So I'd have x parentheses, x squared minus 9. And then if I look inside the parentheses, I can factor that even further because x squared minus 9 is the difference of two squares. So x squared minus 9 becomes x minus 3 times x plus 3. Of course, I still have the x out in front. So here is my simplified version of f of x. The same with g of x. So g of x starts out, I'm just going to box this so I have it. My g of x starts out as x squared minus 2x minus 3. So I have a trinomial. Whenever I'm looking to simplify or factor a trinomial, I look at the last term here. And I just want to ask myself, are there two numbers that multiply to equal the last term and also add up to equal the middle term? Well, yes, there, yes, there are. So negative 3 times positive 1 multiply up to equal negative 3, and negative 3 plus 1 equals negative 2. So those are our values. Whenever you find that with a trinomial, you just put them inside parentheses here with your x. So here is the factored form of my g of x. So here's my simplified form of that. Now I'm going to keep reading the question. So the question says, which of the following expressions is equivalent to f of x over g of x for x is greater than 3. So f of x divided by g of x would equal, and I'm going to use my, my uh, simplified forms. So my numerator would be x parentheses x minus 3 and x plus 3. And my denominator would be parentheses x minus 3 and x plus 1. So immediately I see that these x minus 3s can cancel out. So I'm left with x parentheses x plus 3 divided by x plus 1. And I see that there's nothing more I can do here to simplify this. Therefore, I'm pretty satisfied that I'm finished. And therefore, my answer here is choice D. Now, there is... Another way to answer it, and I'll try to go through this pretty quickly. Let me erase all my ink here. But the other way to answer this question is through a process that I call plug in your own number. I always know that I can use this if and only if I see variables in the answer choices. So we, the way we do this is we say x equals a number we're going to make up. Notice that the question says x is greater than 3, so let's not choose a number for x that's less than 3. I'm going to choose 4. And then using that number that I made up, I'm going to plug it into my original question. So f of 4, right, because I'm making up, I'm saying that x is equal to 4, would be 4 cubed minus 9 times 4. Again, we're not in the calculator section, so you'd have to just make sure you're confident on doing the math here and maybe, you know, using some extra space to work it out. But 4 cubed is 64 minus 9 times 4 is 36. In fact, I'll write it this way, 64 minus 36. And we go here to borrow 14, 8, and 2. So this becomes 28. And then I'm going to do the same thing with g, right? So I'm going to put a 4 in for the x there, which makes that 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 3. So here we get 16 minus 8 minus 3. 16 minus 8 is 8. 8 minus 3 equals 5. So I have a f of x that's equal to 28 and a g of x that's equal to 5. Of course, x being 4 in most cases. So when the question asks for f of x over g of x, right, then I'm just saying, oh, that's the same as 28 over 5, right? And I shouldn't say if. When 
x equals 4. This is what f of x over g of x is equal to. So the last step of the plug in your own number strategy is to find, is to plug that same x value in to your answer choices until you find the matching 28 over 5. So when I look at choice A, if I were to plug 4 in for x, I'd get 1 fifth, so that's not 28 over 5. If I were to plug in 4 for x in this case, I'd get 7 fifths, so that's not 28 over 5. For choice C, if I were to plug in 4 for x, I'd have 4 times 4 minus 3 over 5, which is just 4 fifths, so that's not it either. And making D uh, the apparent answer, but let's just make sure. So when I plug in 4 for x for choice D, I get 4, 4 plus 3, and 4 plus 1, which is 5. And then this becomes 4 times 7 over 5. And this, in fact, is 28 over 5. And that's why choice D is the better answer. So, um, you know, I forgive me for the length of the video, but I squeezed in two very different ways to approach this. I really like this way. I like this plug in your own number way because then you don't have to remember a lot of the factoring and simplifying stuff that I showed in the first process. All you have to remember is if I see an X, if I see a variable or multiple variables in the answer choices, this might be a good strategy to use.